And then the most important one for me, I think, because it was something I struggled with for ages, is to be able to sit alone, no phone, no technology, on your own with your own thoughts for at least 10 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Because That's a big one, man. I, people I, can't I, do I, I struggle with that, bro. Was it you who said, you told me about that study the other day? We didn't talk about it on the podcast, and yeah, we should talk about that now. Yeah, go on. Yeah. Me. So there was this study, right? Um, and I don't know the specifics because the guy who was talking about it on the podcast didn't get into the specifics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the guy who started Calm, you know, the Headspace yeah, app. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he was like, they'd done this study and they asked men and women, would they rather sit alone with their own thoughts for half an hour or receive this painful electric shock? And it was like a, he was like, it was a painful electric shock. It wasn't just like a fucking, you know, one of them buzzer things where you like yeah, zap yeah, yeah. your hand. It was like, it was a painful electric shock. <laughs> 60% of men chose the electric shock and I think 30 or 40% of women chose the electric shock. That's mad. Over just sitting still. Yeah, that's a Because that's all you're doing really, isn't it? That's when we mad. break it down, you're just sitting still for yeah. half an hour. But it's, it, it, it's, it's scary. But it speaks volumes to so where it's, people's it's heads at, doesn't it? Like for, depending upon where, where you're at, that, that can be one of the most scary things yeah. in the world. Oh, like facing your own actual thoughts and your own demons. Man, one of the reasons I started exercising was to escape my thoughts. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, I, would went, I would went through like I've no problem speaking about it. it. Doesn't bother me at all. Not at this stage. I went through a long time of pretty vicious mental health issues. From when I was really, really young, I was kind of I think obscure behaviors that way weren't as recognizable in children my age and like the normal demographic. So they kind of knew there was something up. So I had like really vicious anger issues growing up, um, and then it kind of translated to this pretty horrible bout of depression. And I always struggled with the concept of actually speaking about it. And I always struggled with the concept of kind of accepting that anyone was there to give a shit about my problems, which mm -hmm. I think is a big thing for men. It's like, you know, it's my issue. It's my problem. And it wasn't this like innate masculinity that I had. I don't think that was in. I think these days, a lot of the, where that come from is this kind of like internal masculinity where it's like, I can't talk about my problems because I'm a bloke. Um, you know, I've never really felt that way. But I think because of my own issues and things I went through, I kind of reflect on that a lot. And I'm like, I find it very, very difficult to kind of conceptualize that in my head when you could be speaking to somebody and they could be going through the worst shit fucking unmanageable man so like I always like to kind of break the mental the mental kind of health barrier really early in a conversation with people yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll meet people I've never met before I'm like oh, how are you I'm like, yeah, I'm like how's your head yeah, yeah. I, I remember you said that to me in one of my check-ins yeah. like probably a couple of weeks not a couple maybe a couple of months in it was like a, a slight sign of like I was just a bit sad and deflated a little yeah. bit and you brought that up straight away and I was just like it's the barrier yeah. Sick. Yeah, there's nothing. Grand, but yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're grand, but you know that you, you aren't. Thank you for that. Do you know that kind of way? So sometimes you just put the, you know, you put the foundations in. Like, okay, cool. That person's feeling this way, and you know, it's like I think coaching, you're you're a beacon a lot yeah. of time when you're coaching somebody, and you do whether you like it or not, you become a therapist to a certain extent. Yeah. You know, and if you're not willing to kind of accept that, and you're not willing to kind of take that on the chin so far as part of your role, then you will probably struggle to grow it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, like I've had people say things to me that they'd never ever tell anyone. Yeah. You know, that they'd never speak, and you know, a lot of people will take that as just like. That's not what I signed up for. You should be so fucking privileged that that person mm. feels as though they can say that to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. can say that I'm having this problem. Yeah. It makes me feel this way. And you're one of the very few people on earth who know about yeah. it. Yeah. That kind of I way. think it happens more in our position as well yeah, because 100%. we're in their world, but we're not close to them. It's yeah. why people go to therapy because you, you, you can yeah. easy, more easily talk to a therapist who you oh, don't know, who knows nothing yeah, yeah. about you than you can like your mum. Yeah. Your brother or your sister, who you think might judge you or might love you less yeah, or yeah. anything. They also like, have bias. They have, um, like, you know, they have stake. So, like, if you're somebody, yeah, yeah. if you're conversing with somebody who kind of knows the situation that you're in, there's always going to be that kind of like innate bias that they have, that kind of internal, like, I have this opinion relative to my own yeah, emotional yeah. standards. Yeah. When you go to someone like a professional therapist, they don't have that. Yeah. They're there to serve one person, they're to serve you. Yeah. They don't know anything about the other people. So yeah. therapy is so fucking powerful, man. Yeah. It's one of the best things you can ever do. Therapy saved my life, man. Yeah. Um, 100% of the day. I had an unbelievable therapist called Bernadette Hussey back in the day when I was really, really going through it a couple of years ago. And easily, if she was, I wouldn't be there if she wasn't for her, 1,000%. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's like one of those things. Just just speak, bro. Do you know what I mean? Just, just speak about it. Yeah. Well, things. was there a point where you decided, like, right, because you just said then you didn't feel like you wanted to tell anyone was there yeah. a point where you were just like shit like I need to tell someone I'm gonna have to tell people man um, I had a bit of a scare if you, if you catch my drift um, like suicide issues and yeah. you know I was like this isn't the normal way to feel and that's kind of when it all kind of it actually happened a couple of years before I spoke to anyone about it yeah. and I was with 16 when it happened and uh, after that then I kind of ended up going and chatting to somebody kind of in confidence like I didn't really mind that I was telling them I kind of came out of nowhere they weren't even that close a friend yeah. or that close a family member I just happened to tell them well, this happened a couple of years ago and that person actually took it upon themselves to go tell my ma. Yeah. And uh, brought me up to the house and I spoke to her about it, but that it happened and I'm like, I don't feel like that way anymore. But like, I, th I think since then, 
you know, I've I've had like brushes. It's almost like the the world has kind of reminded me. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like that happened, and you need to have a certain appreciation of people. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and suicide's something that's close to my heart as well. But when I was, I was eighteen. The my, my girlfriend actually killed herself. And you, you know, told me that before. And it's, it's one of those things, man. It's, it's this is gonna sound like the most ridiculous thing you've ever heard in your whole life. But despite how difficult that time in my life was, it's it's taught me lessons about people and about how to talk to people and about how to understand people that have probably elevated my career more than anything else I've ever done. You know, and it sounds so terrible. There's like this kind of positive that comes out of something so horrific, but it's true. You know, and it will be it will be more ignorant of me to deny the fact that that's helped me in my career yeah. than to say that to, to say that it hasn't. Yeah. yeah. When the reality is that it has. You we know, spoke and, about this uh, yeah, a couple of weeks ago, didn't we? Yeah, saying yeah. like, like I've had my own issues yeah. with with mental health. Um, been to some dark places inside yeah, my right, head, man. but I said like this was all way before COVID and the lockdowns and stuff. And I said although people are in a bad place now because of like mental health issues are like ridiculously on the rise but that's a positive because for me that's a positive anyway or there's a positive in that because beforehand like when I reached out about my mental health it was almost like you're a soldier so what like whereas now there's people who've never experienced mental health issues before who've been like oh this is what depression feels like yeah oh this is what anxiety feels like oh shit when like I was speaking to a girl the other week who's suffered with anxiety and depression for, for years and then during lockdowns her mum got really bad depression yeah and her mum ended up turning around to her going I can't believe years ago I used to tell you I used to tell you to just smile yeah and just like just cheer up you'll be okay like yeah this is what it actually feels like like I'm so sorry it's a disease it's an uncontrollable yeah. they, 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 and then they, because, I, like that's shit do you know what I mean it's shit that her yeah. mum feels like that but also like yeah, the change in their relationship now it's because a new, it's a new now age, man. It's a new age yeah. of appreciation. I think there's been like obviously different like phases within time where you know mental health has been a consideration for people. Like obviously mm-hmm. like back when our parents were younger, it wasn't even a thing. Yeah, Do you know you were told to just man up. Mm-hmm. Like even just normal everyday issues like things like dyslexia. Like my dad is viciously dyslexic, but was never yeah. told that he was. Yeah, because yeah, he yeah. was just told that you're a stupid. Do you know that kind of way? So like it's the same kind of thing. Like if you imagine that something's like legitimately a problem, like an intellectual problem, if you have like a mental problem. Imagine the barriers that they had to cross to yeah. outline that, or even to understand it. Yeah. You know, back then they did, they were like, "This, like, oh, this is just who I am. I'm a sad individual." Yeah. Do you know that kind of way? Because yeah. depression wasn't even a thing. You can't yeah. have a medical condition that makes you feel sad. It's yeah. a possibility. Just feel happy. You know? yeah, yeah. And I think you've gone through stages over the course of the past kind of 40, 50 years where it's become more and more accepting to talk about it. Yeah. And now we're in the kind of age where it's like, okay, now we can talk about it. Now we need dudes to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. You know. And I'm not taking away from any females' mental health issues. Obviously, like Danielle, my previous girlfriend, she was she was obviously a female, you know. So it's not like those things are any less important. But I do think we're in an age where there is a lot more of a kind of openness between both genders, mm-hmm. and especially now with men, which is it's, it's great to see. Yeah. Do you know, like I sit down with lads who I've never met in person before, and I'm like, this has happened. These are things that yeah, I feel. Yeah, yeah. These yeah. are things that I have feel, like I have feeling before. Yeah. Um, and this is the age that we're in, which I think is a net positive. 